Hey there, thanks for being here at Garage Time. Today, I'm still trying to keep up the momentum working on that list. You know, that list is 40 items long and I'm in kind of the mid-teens right now. So today's item on the list is an electrical thing and it has to do with the hard start relay. Um, it's often called the hard start relay. It's basically an electrical relay that goes near the starter and it really takes a lot of stress off your car's electrical system. And so I'm gonna be trying it today. I bought some of my own components to kit together. And of course, I don't put anything on my car without testing it. So we'll do some tests and look at the benefits of what this relay does when it's located near the starter. Garage time. This is the device right here. This is a 30 amp relay and it's from Tyco. Now I know these kits are available. You can get them on eBay and all kinds of places. But because this is a, a critical component, I wanted to get the best relay I could find. It's not a Bosch, but it's, it's a, you know, TE Electronics is also good. And I wanted to choose the wiring because it's in a high temperature location. I don't want the wiring to, you know, get loose and melt and stuff. So I wanted to kind of build it myself, if that makes any sense. Okay, for the purpose of setting up a little experiment, I'm using my test stand and the stock starter. This is the stock Bosch 911 starter. And I'm going to be measuring the amount of current that goes into the solenoid kind of before and after we add the relay to see if it's really worthwhile. Everything's connected right now. This measures the current through the wire that powers the solenoid. Right now it's measuring zero. So when I hit the start button, you're gonna see the motor start spinning. It's gonna shoot it out into the flywheel and it's gonna create some current to do that. That was 8.9 amps at the highest, zero. It goes, you know, probably past 10 in the beginning and then once it's running, it goes down to about seven and a half. Okay, I don't recommend doing this at home, but I'm gonna put a block of wood in here to kind of simulate the flywheel. And if there's any resistance of the solenoid pushing the gear into the flywheel, what does that do to the current? It's about the same actually. Yeah, the highest I got was nine amps, even when I'm obstructing the gear. I think that's a good number to start with. We'll call it, we'll call it nine or 10. Okay, the amount of current in the big wire is gonna be much, much more. That's the amount of current that goes right to the motor. The solenoid only engages the motor. So this is a relay in itself, actually. So I'm gonna measure the, or try to measure the current in the big wire, uh, just for reference, just so you guys have it. It went over the limit, which, the limit on this one's 100 amps. So it, when the motor quickly, quickly starts, it's probably around 100. And then when it's running, there's no load on it. So it's gonna go down. I'm getting like 80 amps right when the motor kicks in and then it drops down to about 15. But that's, what, that's not realistic because there's no motor on there. So if there's a motor and it's trying to crank it over, you can get several hundred amps through this wire right here. That's different than what we're trying to deal with. We're only dealing with the current going in the solenoid and it seems to be pretty steady at nine or 10. There are some heavy duty contacts inside the solenoid. So the solenoid does two things. One, it pushes this Bendix gear out, which I showed you. And two, it also makes electrical contact between this wire which engages the coil or the uh, solenoid. And then internally, it connects the power to the motor directly to this heavy gauge wire. So that's how we're able to handle 200 amps at the motor and only 10 amps on this wire because there's essentially a relay inside this. It just so happens to take 10 amps to make that relay work. So you might be thinking, what's the problem? And if all your components are brand new, 10 amps is actually not a problem. Your harness is brand new. I, I've measured my harness at 10 amps and I measured a very small voltage drop because I had it out of the car and I was checking everything. So I think my harness is up to the task. 
The thing that concerns me though is the ignition switch. It's a 40 or 50 year old ignition switch almost, and it's been sitting a long time. Those contacts inside the switch are probably corroded. And when it was brand new, 10 amps is easy. It's designed for it. But over age and over time, those contacts can be corroded. And as you run 10 amps all the way from the solenoid, all the way up to the switch and then back to the solenoid again, that's a long distance and there's several connections in between, especially the one in the uh, actual ignition switch. So 10 amps over time is gonna cause some degradation in the system and you build up resistance. And that resistance will cause a voltage drop at the solenoid. And you may not, in certain conditions, you may not have the exact 12 volts that your the battery has. All that 12 volts may get lost in the ignition switch and it may not get to the solenoid, which means you may not be pushing the contacts together hard enough and it might make for your starter to work sporadically or not hard enough. This is the diagram for this relay and it sort of sits like this. You can see how the terminals are oriented and they're numbered with these numbers that correspond with, I guess, traditional relay numbers. But what currently happens with this is the power from the ignition switch goes right to the solenoid. That's the 10 amps we were talking about. But what the relay does inside its you know, magic black box is when it gets a signal from the ignition switch, it's going to take power directly from this heavy 12 volt connection, four gauge wire, and it's gonna direct it right to the solenoid. That should give a much better and more reliable outcome. So I'm using the same color wires that the factory use, it's just so it's easy to troubleshoot in the future. These wires are gonna be really short for the most part anyways, but I do wanna to try to be consistent. I am using this socket too, so it makes replacing this relay easier if I need to. And it keeps all the terminal, terminals insulated here. Okay, I marked this wire with some red on it. This is the one that gets a little extra power from this red wire. That's why I went with red. It's not in the diagram that way, but then again, this relay's not in the diagram either. This is the correct color that normally goes to the solenoid. This goes to ground and then this will go to the heavy wire right next to the starter. So let's plug it in. This goes like this. Okay, I left these wires long because I am not sure where I'm gonna install this in the car. So, but I do have terminals on all the ends. So now I can attach it to my test stand and redo the measurement, see how it works. Yeah, the relay is connected now. This one goes right to the solenoid. The tab happens to be there on the bottom. This is the power I took right off of this terminal, which is where the heavy jumper cable wire attaches to. So the power is gonna be basically directed from this portion that goes right to the battery, into the relay, and then back into the solenoid. And then this wire here is where this would go to the ignition switch. And I've had to cobble it together right there. Okay, this switch here on this control box is more than enough to handle the 10 amps. This is a 60 amp switch. So in this case, you know, you wouldn't necessarily need the relay because this switch is in good condition. But we can try to like partially press it and kind of trick it into doing something it's not supposed to do and see how the relay reacts. So it's working. Even over the starter motor, you can hear this in this relay switching internally. This is the wire now that would be going to the ignition switch, which happens to be on the control box right now. I'm in the two amp range. So that's 0.2 amps. And then if we measure this wire just for fun, this should be back to what it was before. This one should be the eight amps. 
Yep, seven. Okay, those are the results I was pretty much expecting. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. It's taking the current out of the ignition switch and the car's wiring, and it's putting it into the relay in the short length between that 12 volt source, which is right there at the starter. You know, that cable goes right to the battery. And then the short bit of wiring that goes to the relay. So you're gonna get a, a, a full 12 volts right there at the solenoid, you know, when you need it. So remember, if you're if you got a brand new ignition switch, you're probably. I mean, this is not necessarily an upgrade. This is really considered insurance to protect your ignition switch from failing in the near term. Now it could still fail, and if it does, in, after the relay is installed, it's going to fail for mechanical reasons, not electrical reasons. So if you think about all the items that are passing power through the ignition switch, you have the ignition coil. You know, it could be like as, as many as four or five amps on a stock ignition. Uh, you have the fuel pump. Fuel pump could be, I don't know, maybe eight to 10. And if you add in another eight to 10 amps for the starter solenoid, you're now like 25 amps or so in the ignition switch. And that is gonna create some heat. So if you have a perfect storm of heat on a hot day, you've just gone for a long drive, your ignition circuit's been running for a while, and you go to start it, well, maybe your switch is gonna just give up the ghost. I mean, it's a ticking time bomb, you never know. I could carry a spare relay and swap that out. I'd have to probably climb under the car, swap that relay out, and I could be back on the road in minutes. Versus if I had to change an ignition switch, they're you know, hundreds of dollars, and the availability is not so great. If your wiring is in bad shape, the relay isn't a good solution. Like you gotta fix the wiring, you want your, ignition switch to be functional, but this will just prevent it from failing in, it might extend it like another 10 years or whatever that case may be. One idea to mount this relay would be to put it maybe on a bracket from these two screws and attach it kind of back here. The starter does get warm, so it might also be a good idea to move it a little further away, maybe mount it to the body or some kind of hanger off the bottom of the car. You don't want to get it wet or you know protect it from you want to prevent it from getting damaged somehow probably the worst place to put it would be up here on top that's going to get a lot of heat from the starter motor and potentially the transaxle conducting heat into it so i think i'll put it somewhere near here you want the wires to be short but you also want it to be protected another thing off the list 